this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at drawing a rose using colored pencils. I'll be using Prismacolor brand colored pencils. And I'm going to begin with a dark brown pencil and just draw the contour lines. Contour lines are basically the outlines. As I'm drawing the outlines, I'm looking at where each petal ends and another petal begins. And I'm just concentrating on getting those shapes here at the beginning stages of my drawing. Usually the shapes are smaller and more complex towards the center of the rows. Now that I've got my contour line drawing defined, I'm going to begin to look at the darker values that exist within the rows. The darker values are the shadows I'm going to indicate with the dark brown pencil. I'm going to add these values in the direction that the rose petals extend out. These are called cross contour lines and they'll help define the form of my rows. I'm using a photo reference here to look at as I draw my rows. This will ensure that I create a realistic looking rose. If you're looking to draw a realistic rose, I would suggest that you find a photo reference. Or, better yet, find an actual rose and draw it from life. Now that I've got my darker values defined, I'm going to begin to add some of the color. Since this rose is going to be red, I'm going to start with a darker red and I'm going to let some of that red go right over the top of my darker values that I added in the previous stage. I'm also going to continue to concentrate on the cross contour lines or the lines that extend out from the petals of the rows. Again, this will help create the illusion of form that I'm looking for. In this drawing, I'm working on textured, toned brown paper. Usually I work on smoother surfaces when I'm using colored pencils to easily blend the colors. In this case, the texture of the paper is going to translate a bit in our final drawing. We're still going to have some smoother areas, but the texture of the paper will still be preserved. Now that I've got my base coat of darker red on the surface, I'm going to go with the more local color, which is basically a true red, right on top of what I've already drawn. By layering colors in each stage of the drawing, I'm going to create depth that will translate into the final, realistic version of the rose. With each layer of colored pencils that I add, I'm keeping in mind the cross contour lines of the rose petals. Each time I add these linear qualities, I am aiding in creating the illusion of form. As you layer your colors, you'll notice that the colored pencils become a little bit more creamier. This will allow you to really have full control over the material as you put it down. Here I'm going to add some white to create some of the highlights that exist on the tips of each one of the rose petals. Again, I'm starting with the white at the tip of the flower and then bringing cross contour lines down. I'm allowing the white to mix with the other colors. By doing this, you're creating an effect called burnishing. And burnishing colored pencils will create smoother surfaces and allow the colors to mix. I'll go back and forth between my darker brown, my mid-tone red, and my white to create the illusion of the rose petal. As I'm working, I notice that the white is a bit too strong and I need more of a warmer, lighter value or tint to tone down the colors. So I just switch to a cream. From here on out, instead of using the white, I'll use the cream to create the highlights. This will produce a warmer highlight that I'm after.
Not only will I burnish with the lighter values, but I'll also burnish in areas that are darker. By taking my mid-tone red and going over the darker values that I laid down in the first step, I'm creating a smoother surface. I can then take a darker brown and go back over it and darken up the shadows just a bit more to create more contrast and more pop between the individual petals of the rose. Now that I've got a layer that's somewhat burnished, I'm going to go back with a sharpened dark brown pencil and create more of the details. Here I'm going to make the outlines contrast a little bit more, and I'm also going to put some of the subtle details that happen in each one of the petals. These details might include little bits of shadow or more linear qualities that will create the illusion of form just a bit further. If I make my darks just a bit too dark, I can always go back with my mid-tone red and burnish them out and create more realistic shadows. I'll continue to work all the way around the flower, adding my mid-tone red, some of the dark brown for the shadows, and a little bit of the cream color for the highlights until I'm satisfied with the details that I'm producing on the flower. Now that I'm satisfied with my rose petals, I can move on to the stem and the leaves that exist around the flower. I'm going to start with just a regular yellow-green color and begin adding just a base coat of color on the surface. Now I'm going to take blue and darken up some of the shadows a bit. Remember that green is produced by mixing blue and yellow together. That's why blue is an excellent choice for shadows in green areas. Now I'm also going to use yellow and lighten up some of the highlighted areas and let that mix a little bit with the yellow green that we put down originally. I might burnish those colors with the original green that I used. I'm also going to use a bit of the cream color and make the highlights pop a little bit more. I'll also take the dark brown and burnish some of the shadows and make them have a little bit more contrast as well. For this demonstration, I'm going to leave the rose just sitting on the textured brown paper. If you want to though, you can go back and create a background to increase the contrast a bit further on your drawing of a rose. And there you have it, a quick drawing of a rose using colored pencils.